Welcome to the UGC lecture series. This is the EPG Patashara lecture series on computer science and we are talking about the paper of machine learning. Now, this module is about reinforcement learning. We had already seen about the basics of reinforcement learning in the previous module. In this module also, we will be talking about some of the other concepts associated with reinforcement learning. Uh, so, these are the people responsible for the creation of this particular module. Now, uh, let us look at the objectives. The learning objectives of this module are what are the actual objectives of reinforcement learning, what is known as passive and active learning, what is known as known and unknown environment and then we will summarize what we have spoken about uh, in this module. Okay. So, let us start off with the first um, definition or um, of passive versus active learning. So, these are two types of reinforcement learning, one is called passive learning and one is called active learning. In passive learning, the agent has a fixed policy and tries to learn the utilities of states by observing the world go by and it is analogous to policy evaluation. Now, uh, remember what is reinforcement learning? We are having a state and based on the state, uh, I mean, uh, input state, we are taking an action and we reach another state. So, we are talking about learning the utilities of state so that we make the correct action. So, this is done through a fixed policy where he try, uh, where the agent will try to learn the utilities of states by observing the world. So, this is uh, a policy evaluation basically. Um, policy is fixed and we are trying to find out how good the policy is. Active learning on the other hand, the agent attempts to find an optimal or at least good policy by acting in the world. So, here he, he is it is not a fixed policy, he tries to find the best policy. So, looking at it from another viewpoint, as we said, uh, reinforcement learning is as we have already seen in the previous module and again here is a sequential decision problem because you are having one state, you take an action, go to the next state, then take uh, an action, go to the next state and so on, so, so that you reach the goal uh, or reach uh, in reinforcement learning terms, you get the maximum rewards. Now, uh, in uh, learn uh, in the two approaches that we have passive and active, in passive uh, again, we have already said it is a fixed policy. We learn values of states or state histories and try to maximize the utility of their outcomes. So, need of a model of that environment, what operations and what states they lead to. So, each operation and the state they lead to is what we need. Now, in the pa in active, we learn values of state action pairs. There, we learn the value of the state. So, if it is a good state, you take an action and go there. But here, we are talking about state and action pairs. So, given a state and an action, which is the best action to take. So, do, does not require a model of the environment except that what are the legal moves you can do or what are the legal actions you can do from a state, but you cannot look ahead. So, this is passive and active learning. The next uh, categorization of reinforcement learning, so to say, is model based learning versus model free reinforcement learning. In model based approach to reinforcement learning, we learn the MDP model, Markov decision process model or an approximation of it and then we use it for policy evaluation to find the optimal policy. So, what we are trying to do is we are having the, uh, the model of the environment and or an approximation of the model of the environment and we use a policy evaluation to find the optimal policy. In a model free approach to uh, reinforcement learning, what we do, we, we derive the optimal policy without explicitly learning the model. So, it is like uh, we have learned before generative and discriminative model. So, here we do not we do not actually learn a model, but we learn the optimal policy. So, this is useful when the model is difficult to represent or to learn. Now, with that basic um, two uh, categorization, one was passive learning, active learning, the other was uh, model based learning and model free learning. Now, we have the next one which is a deterministic transition and stochastic transition. Okay. So, uh, here we define something called M i j a, a is action there. Uh, and i and j are states. So, is the pro m i j a is the probability to reach state j when taking an action a in state i. So, here now what is the uh, uncertainty? The uncertainty is going from state i, if I take an action a, there is uh, no full guarantee that I will reach uh, state j. So, the probability of reaching that state j is represented by m i j. This is a simple environment that presents the agent with a sequential decision problem. This we have already seen an example of this slide and we can give a any move cost something. So, you have to uh, it obviously means you have to go through with less number of moves. So, the credit assignment problem is a sparse reinforcement problem. In an offline algorithm, the action sequences are determined beforehand. In an online algorithm, action sequences is conditional on the observation that we see on the way. So, it is a dynamic problem. So, it is important especially in st stochastic environment where we do not know actually whether we will reach the uh, state uh, take the action A from state A. 
Now, let us look at the model from the act, uh, viewpoint of a uh, mathematical, we are going towards the mathematical model. So, let us look at this. The objective is basically to find a mapping from uh, pi from x to a, where so, we have to try to find the maximize the sum combination of future rewards received over time. So, time is an important parameter in any RL model. So, you have valuation. So, this is a mapping we are trying to find for, for reaching from here taking a series of action and reaching the uh, end and you want to receive the maximum number of awards. Now, valuation models you want to quantify how good this mapping is and so what you do is you have uh, two types of models there. One is the finite horizon model. So, we consider maximizing the total reward over a finite horizon. So, the uh, assumes that uh, the agent can take only n time steps, he has only n time steps to live. So, before that he has to, uh, his, you are putting a limit on the time. So, that is called finite horizon time and at that point you say that the expected uh, uh, value okay, uh, is um, the total is the summation of uh, 0 to t, where t is the total time he lives the horizon. Uh, R t, where R t is the reward at each and every time point t. So, this is the to, uh, finite horizon model. Okay. Then we go on to define what is called a infinite horizon discounted model. So, here the defining we expected value e that we defined previously is, uh, is given as the total reward, uh, total reward and it is difficult to find when we are talking about infinite horizons, because we cannot do a summation with infinite infinite horizon. So, what we do is we introduce a discount factor uh, gamma and that that is the future rewards are discounted by uh, some gamma per time step. So, that is what we do here. So, here now we, the expected value is uh, redefined uh, with infinite horizon model like this is t is equal to 0 to infinity gamma of to the power of t r of t. So, gamma t is the uh, discount factor at each and every time sl uh, time slot r of t is the reward and the discount factor varies between 0 and 1. So, you are giving a small weightage to the reward depending upon uh, the, the future. So, you are discounting some rewards as you go uh, further. So, this is the um, uh, the same uh, reinforcement learning model using an infinite horizon discounted model. So, the average reward can be written as the limit of t tending to infinity 1 by t of um, expected value uh, summation of 0 to t r of t. So, this is the method in which the average reward is calculated. Now, let us see how to solve this problem mathematically. Okay. So, we normally formulate this we have discussed we touched upon this in the previous model we discuss, uh, formulate this as a Markov decision process called MDP. Where we are, or partially observable Markov decision process called POMDP. So, these are the two basic formulations that we use for reinforcement learning. Now, uh, we try to maximize the state value and the action value functions using a Bellman op uh, optimality equation. This is to find the optimal and use, use approximation to solve the Bellman equation. So, in order to solve this optimality equation, you need to use some sort of approximations. So, sometimes dynamic uh, programming is used, Monte Carlo methods can be used, temporal difference uh, learning can be used. So, these are methods actually to solve the optimality equation. Uh, before give, uh, we go for, uh, further, let us look at MDP and POMDP a little more in detail. So, MDP is Markov decision process, POMDP is partially observable Markov uh, decision process. So, the Markov decision process MDP has the following components a state S, an actions A, probability transitions um, of going to uh, the probability of reaching S dash given uh, S and the action, okay. and immediate rewards what is the reward associated with uh, for I mean a reward associated with the action taken in state S, a discount factor gamma and the current state is always perfectly uh, observed. So, this is a Markov decision process, the diagram is not about uh, this diagram that we see here is more uh, is not about Markov decision process, it is about the other one which is the partially observable Markov decision process POMDP. This again has the states yes, has the actions A, has the probability uh, transitions, has immediate rewards as defined before, a discount factor as before. In addition, we have what are called as observation set. So, you are uh, you have a state, but in addition to the state you have some observation set and observation probabilities associated with that and an initial belief B of 0. So, these are three additional 
uh, if you look at this, this is somewhat similar to the hidden thing that we talked about observed and state. So, the same thing. So, observation said the observation probability, the probability of finding that observation in that state and an initial belief of b of 0. As you look at the figure, you have s of t and then z of t, the observation associated with s of t, it will have a probability also and the action taken at that time and reaching s t plus 1 and what is z t plus 1 and so on. So, this is the uh, partially observable Markov decision process. We have brought in an observation z and the observation probability as associated with it. So, uh, let us go now to the simpler one, the Markov decision process. Uh, uh, already we have said an MDP has four components, the finite states, the action, the transition function. Uh, this is the probability of going to state s dash after taking action a in state s and how many parameters does it take to represent that particular transition function. And you have a real uh, bounded real valued reward function called R of s, immediate reward we get for being in state s. Yes. For example, in a goal based domain R of s, uh, R of s may equal to 1 for goal states and 0 for all others. Uh, can be generalized to in include action cost and then we define it as R of s comma a. So, here uh, what is the reward for being in state s yes. and if you have reached from uh, taking action a that will have uh, some cost, if you have taken action a 1, action a 2 will be different. So, here it can be generalized to include the action cost and can be generalized to be a stochastic function also. So, it can easily generali uh, generalize to countable or continuous state and action spaces that is possible. So, this is the simplest model the Markov decision process. So, now let us look at remember we spoke about many things as in this module we started with act passive and active then we started with model based and non model based then we spoke about um, macro decision process and partially observable macro decision process. Now, here we are going to talk about passive learning in a known environment. So, you have a passive learner a passive learner simply watches the world going by and tries to learn the utility of being in various states that is all he does not observe anything from the world. Okay. Another way to think of a passive learner is an agent with a fixed policy of trying to determine its benefits. Uh, so, whatever may happen around him is not bothered, he just has a fixed policy. So, in passive learning, the environment generates state transition and the agent perceives them. Consider an agent trying to learn the utilities of the state shown below. So, again, we have the same, this is a typical example that is often used in reinforcement learning. So, here we have now, here an agent can move north, east, south and west in certain cases he cannot move it and the termination we terminate on reading either 4, 3 or uh, 4, 2 or 4, 3. So, that we have defined this also in the previous module. So, now the agent is provided with m i j a model giving the probability of reaching um, reaching from state i to state a j. Each state transition to neighboring uh, states we will assume initially has equal probability. So, if you look here uh, from the uh, this corresponds to 1, 2, 3, 4 down and uh, you can see that this corresponds to this particular uh, configuration and uh, so from um, 1 you can go only twice you can either move north or you can move to the east. So, only 2. So, uh, if there are 2 it is divided e, uh, into half. So, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 from some places you can take 3. So, you have 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and some places you cannot take any action for thus 1 and minus 1. So, it is 1. So, you can see how the trans uh, the probability is defined. So, we are defining we are looking at each of the uh, nodes and uh, state here state. So, if for example, from 1, 1 you can go 2, 1 or you can go to 1, 2. So, those are only 2 possible. So, that is why it is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and um, let us take another example. Uh, for example, from um, the 2, 3, okay, from 2, 3 you can go to um, 1, 3 you can go to oh no that also does not, yeah from 3, 1 you can go to either um, 2, 1, 4, 1 or you can go to 2, 3. So, the 3 actions are there. So, that will have, so 1 divided by 3, 0.33 that is how you get those transition values. Of course, for 4, 2 and 4 um, um, you stop, it is a termination condition. So, you cannot go, there is only place you can be that is either uh, plus 1 or minus 1 that is 4, 2, 4, 3. So, this is the explanation of this module, we are just making that assumption probability ap assumption. Now, to solve this problem, what is the best path to take to reach the, you have the start state and you have a terminating state. What is the best path to take to reach the award uh, reward? Uh, there are three approaches to this. So, this is the next uh, topic that you have associated with uh, reinforcement learning. One is least mean squares, one is adaptive dynamic programming and the other is temporal difference programming. 
we will be going into temporal difference of programming and another uh, method called q learning a little more detail in the pre, uh, next um, two modules but here we will talk in general about the three approaches so let us take an example of least mean squares so this is the least mean squares that normally you take uh, for evaluating error so follow the policy for many uh, epochs epochs is the um, path you follow okay till you reach a terminal state giving training sequences so you have giving training sequences so you are estimating what is the utility of being in a state but this has slow convergence it takes an agent well over a thousand training sequence to get close to the correct value so assume that after entering plus 1 or minus 1 state this uh, the agent enters 0 or what terminal state so you you enter terminal state so that's an assumption you make because even after reaching that if you do not make that assumption you can still keep moving right so that's the problem so uh, you the agent makes random runs sequences of random moves through the environment so for example you start with 1 1 go to 1 2 go to 1 3 then go to 2 3 then 3 3 then 4 3 so and you uh, land up with plus 1 now adding up with plus 1 is not the issue how many moves you have made to reach that plus 1 there is another you start with 1 1 go to 2 1 3 1 4 1 uh, I mean sorry 3 1 mm, 3 2 and 4 2 and you reach minus 1 so here uh, you, the reward I mean after entering plus 1 you are assuming that it is ended that is why so like this you can have any number of sequences right so after that you will do a learning now with least mean square you have a direct estimation which is called model free estimation where you estimate uh, the utility of pi s that is a, a state as average total reward of up epochs con containing s see remember what we are trying to do is we are trying to find the utility of a particular state so what do you do you take these runs all these runs and find out what is the utility of each I mean that state yes in each of the epochs okay so calculating from s to the end of the epoch so as average total reward of epochs containing s calculating from s to the end of the epoch so reward to go of a state s is the sum of the discounted rewards from that state until a terminal state is reached so you use observed reward to go of the state as the direct evidence of the actual expected utility of that state so if you reach that state when you reach the terminal state what is the utility so you are trying to find the utility of a state remember here it is only the utility of a state okay so this is the reward to go definition the reward to go definition is the sum of the rewards from that state until the terminal state is reached so that is least mean squared so you are trying to find that and find the average now the next approach is adaptive dynamic programming so in the least uh, mean squared approach what did you do you started from every state I mean start state is fixed so you start from 1 1 and you take all the possible directions you can to reach the terminal state terminal could be plus 1 minus 1 and then uh, each state is either 1 1 1 2 and so you try to find out where that s comes and you are trying to find the utility of each and every state that is it okay now adp that is a model free state because we are not looking at any model we are just looking at finding it out without a model now you have adp adp is a model based approach you follow the policy for a while uses the value or uh, or policy iteration algorithm to actually calculate the actual utilities of, of states given the estimated model so what you are doing is you are trying to learn for i mean you are trying to follow the rules find find a policy and then uh, you calculate the exact utility using that estimated model so makes optimal use of local constraints on utilities of states imposed by the neighborhood structure of the environment that is why it is called a model based approach so you are considering the environment also but the problem is it is somewhat intractable for large state spaces so ri is the reward of being in state i often non zero only for few n states and uh, mij is the property of transit uh, transition from state i to state j and uh, the utility of i uh, that is the uh, uh, utility of being in state i is e the utility of the state i is equal to the reward of being in state i plus the summation of the probability of uh, going from uh, i to j and the utility of j so you are now considering the utility of j for all the other states from which you can go from i so some of the mijs will be zero if there is no action from i to j okay so this way you try to find out the utility of a state i this is called adaptive dynamic programming to find the utility of a state i so uh, adp as we already told is a model based approach and this is the value of that state s yes, is nothing but r of s the reward at that state plus now we are introducing certain other things beta uh, 
uh, summation of s dash all the states from which you can reach from s on taking action a and the value of that uh, terminating I mean the state which you have transitioned to so destination state. So, that is the idea no when you go from one state take an action and reach another state the, the value of this state depends on the value of the state you have reached also. So, ADP is a model based approach this is just an expansion of the previous uh, equation that we saw in the last slide. So, follow the policy for a while then estimate transition model based on the observations then learn the reward function. So, what is learned is the reward function as well as the transition model and um, uh, you use the estimate model to compute the utility of the policy. So, how can we estimate the transition model T S A S dash? So, that is the issue here. So, that is what we are learning. Simply fraction the number of time we see S dash after taking action A in state S. So, what you do here is the it is the fraction of that is from S uh, you take actions. You try to find out the fraction uh, out of the total number of uh, time you have taken action A in state S, how many times have you reached S, day, S dash. So, that will be the uh, that particular uh, transition model. Uh, for example, here you have these are the values that have been calculated the utility of each and every state. So, you start from 1 1 and based on 1 uh, from 1 1 to reach 2 1 2 uh, 0.5 probability that is the uh, probability. So, m i j. So, you have the equation here this equation. So, based on this equation you do the uh, calculations okay, and you find that these are the utilities of the different states. As you can see the utility of uh, the states near reaching plus 1 is much more because there are more chances of transitioning to the plus 1 after you reach uh, uh, 3 3 or maybe 2 3. Okay. So, these are some of the this is the um, calculation of the utility of each state uh, considering the um, probability of reaching that state from um, the source state S yes, and also the utility of the destination state. So, for example, the utility of 3 comma 3 here 3 comma 3 uh, is 0 0.3 comma 3 into uh, the utility of 4 comma 3 you could have reached that from uh, 4 comma 3 okay. and then uh, 3 comma 0 0.3 3, that 0 0.3 3 you have got from the other diagram which m i j that is actually into 2 comma 3 plus that. So, this value is uh, it is a dynamic. Uh, so, you are taking the previous values and you get uh, 0 0.252 because you need to know the utility of 4 3, 2 3 and 3 2 to actually calculate 3 3. So, this becomes a um, problem of this sort. So, that is the adaptive dynamic programming. The next general method is the temporal difference learning. We will just touch upon this here. We will be talking about this more in detail later. The key is to use the observed transitions to adjust the values of the observed states so that they agree with the constraint equation. So, here what we are doing is we are observing some transition. So, you adjust the value of the observed states so that they agree with these constraints. The performance runs noisier than LMS, but it has more uh, less of error and deal with observed states during sample uh, runs. So, it does not take all instances which is ADP does, it only looks at some sample runs. So, Suppose we uh, observe a transition from state i to state j, state uh, u i is 0 0.5 and u j uh, minus 0 0.5 and u j is plus 0.5 suggest that it should increase uh, this is the crux of the um, algorithm. You suggest that we should increase u i so that it, you make it agree with the successor that is the idea. So, can be achieved using the updating rule. So, u i is equal to u i plus alpha of r i plus u j minus u i. So, intuitively moves us closer to satisfying the Bellman constraint. So, u i is the um, you are trying to change the value of u i such that old value u i plus alpha into r i, r i is the reward at of the state i plus the difference between the utility of the j the destination minus u i. So, alpha is a learning rate parameter it can be adaptive for good convergence. Okay. So, this is the basis of temporal difference learning that is why it is called temporal difference because you are trying to find the you are trying to move this uh, the utility of the source state uh, such that uh, increases utility of the um, source state such that it makes up for the difference between the utility of the source and the destination. So, now let us look at passive learning from an unknown uh, environment. So, least mean squares approach and temporal difference approach operate unchanged in an initially unknown environment. Adaptive uh, dynamic programming approach adds a step that updates an estimated model of the environment if it is an unknown. So, ADP approach the environment model is learnt by direct observation of transitions and can be updated by keeping track of the percentage of times each um, I mean from a state transition to its each of its neighbors. 
So, uh, you can use an ADP and TDP approaches where the ADT approach and the TDP are closely related. Both try to make local adjustment to the utility estimates in order to make each state agree with its successor. So, that is what basically you are doing. So, uh, the minor difference is AD, uh, the temporal difference learning adjusts the state to agree with its observed successor, ADP adjusts the state to agree with all its successors. So, that is the basic difference. What did we do? We, we try to take a summation of all the successors. On the other hand, TD takes a to observed successor alone. So, that is a major difference. And the important uh, difference is TD makes a single adjustment per observed transition, while ADP makes as many adjustments as it needs to restore consistency between the utility estimates U and the environment model M. Now, to make now ADP as, as you can see is not as efficient because it is trying to cover all the neighbors that it can. So, directly approximate the algorithm for value iteration or policy iteration and you can make a prioritized sweeping uh, heuristic makes adjustments to states whose likely successors have just undergone a large adjustment in their own utility estimate. So, you are trying to uh, use some heuristics. Advantage of the of the approximate ADP is that efficient in terms of computation uh, eliminate uh, long value iterations occur in the early stage as you go along it is efficient. Okay, active learning minor changes to the passive learning. So, what you do here is uh, you have the same uh, utility is equal to the reward plus maximum of A j m i j a u j. What this does is the environment you remember what is m i j? m i j is the transition property from i to j, u j is the utility of j the destination node. Now, here we are doing a maximization. So, environment model now incorporates the probability of transitions to other sta states given a particular action. So, you are what you are trying to uh, do here is you you are trying to choose an action that maximizes this value. So, maximizes expected uh, utility agent needs a performance element to choose an action at each step. So, at each step you need to know which will maximize its probability. So, here you have an active ADP approach you know, need to learn the probability m i uh, here we did just did respect of the action we said i to j, but here what we are saying uh, the probability of moving from i to j on the action a okay? and the input of the function will include the action taken. So, the on the other hand the temporal difference approach the model acquisition problem for the temporal difference agent is identical to that for the ADP agent. The update rule remains unchanged, but however the temporal difference uh, algorithm will converge to the same values at ADP as the number of training sequence tends to infinity. So, both work in the same way. So, now we have a, a small concept that we have to discuss before we summarize this module that is explore versus exploit. Now, we have seen this again before remember in genetic algorithms we spoke about the same concept. So, exploitation is we want to maximize its reward and exploration is maximize long term well being. So, both we want to do. So, in so this is a uh, so choose a random action once in k times. So, that you do not get stuck in a rut and otherwise choose the action with the highest expected utility. So, the um, k minus 1 out of k times you are going to choose the highest expected utility. So, you are in the exploitation mode, but once in a while you choose a random random uh, action once in k times it may not lead you to the maximum reward, but you still choose this. So, this is to allow for exploration let us look at spaces that do not go in the direction of maximum reward. So, the learner actively interacts with the in environment at the beginning the learner does not know anything about the environment it gradually gains the experience and learns how to react to the environment. So, Dilemma is whether you should do the exploration or the exploitation. After some number of steps, should I select the best current choice, which is the exploitation, or try to learn more about the environment, which is the exploration? That if you take a random jump only, you will learn more about the environment. So, that is the question. Exploitation may involve the selection of a suboptimal action and prevent the learning of an optimal choice because you are not looked in other directions. So, exploration may spend too much time on trying bad currently suboptimal actions. So, exploration on its own is also not good. So, another solution is to combine exploration and exploitation. So, act randomly in hopes of eventually exploring the entire environment that is one way or greedy approach act to a maximize utility using current estimate. So, that is the idea. So, you have a reasonable balance act more wacky exploratory when agent has little idea of the environment, but as you go along uh, you become more greedy. So, this is an n bandits problem you have a single state k, k uh, armed bandit. So, here you have lever 1, lever 2 to lever k and you have a slot machine and a reward. 
So, among k levers choose the one that pays the best. Okay. So, q of a is the value of action a, the reward is r of a. Now, set the uh, action value of the action to be r of a, choose a if it maximizes, okay. but once in a way you are expected to choose an action that is not actually the best. So, uh, it, it is uh, rewards are stochastic keep an expected reward. So, this is the um, value of an action at time t plus 1 is nothing but the value of the action at time t plus the value of the action of uh, uh, time t plus 1 minus the q t of a. So, uh, give this is an example given dollar 10 to play a slot on a slot machine with 5 levers each play costs dollar 1. So, each pull of a lever may produce payoff we do not know 0, 1, 5 and 10 find the optimal pay, uh, policy where payoff is the most. So, this is again a trade off between exploitation and exploitation, exploitation continue to pull the lever that returns the most positive reward, exploitation try to pull a new one which you have never seen. So, it is a deterministic model, the model payoff for each lever is fixed, it is not that it is not fixed, but it is unknown in advance. So, the stochastic model the payoff each lever is uncertain, you do not know uh, with known or unknown probability. So, you do not know uh, how much the payoff each lever is, here we have decided on the pay. Okay. So, in general in deterministic case you can have q a is equal to the value of action and the reward of the act a is r a. So, q a can be put as r a and then you choose the maximum q a dash. In the stochastic model the reward is non deterministic, it is depend on uh, the probability of the reward given the action we do not know. So, q t of a is the estimate of the value of the act at time t and then you can use learning factor and uh, you have an expected value and should converge to a mean as t increases. So, the idea is that initially you start with unknown and then you should converge. So, this is actually a simplified uh, reinforcement learning single state or single uh, slot machine versus multiple states. So, here you have different reward possibilities give the reward given the state and the action. So, q s i a j is the value of action a j in state s that you are meant to learn. So, action actually causes the state uh, change in addition to the reward, the reward is also there. Rewards are not necessarily of immediate value, so you can have delayed rewards. So, this is what we have discussed in this particular module. So, we have outlined the objectives of reinforcement learning, meaning the objectives are the mapping function and how you want to act maximize the award reward. Then we have explained passive and active learning. We have also discussed known and unknown environment and then we discussed uh, exploration versus exploitation with respect to we, uh, we explained that with respect to a k bandits problem. So, this we uh, complete the basics of reinforcement learning and in the next module we will be talking about certain techniques a little more in detail. Thank you.